Ever since I've owned my Porsche Macan, I've really gained a new appreciation for Porsches. Their technological sophistication, their engineering quality, their build quality, they're really at a level that other car manufacturers can't really match. Other German brands like BMWs and Audis are also great, and I can attest to that because I own a couple BMWs right now. But Porsche takes it up a couple notches in terms of their engineering execution. If you want to talk about the pinnacle of engineering, this is it. This 2022 Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Porsche's definitely got plans to go all electric with their new Macan coming out and their Cayenne and Cayman that are going to be fully electric. And with this Taycan, Porsche is definitely making a statement and telling us that it means business when it comes to making electric Porsches. This is a very impressive car and it completely looks the part. These wheels are huge and what I love about the design is it exposes the huge brakes and calipers perfectly suited for this insanely fast Porsche. This is a four-door Porsche Taycan, which means you have some amount of practicality. You push this button, which is located in the rear bumper and the trunk opens up. I've got a good amount of space back here. I was in a Tesla Model 3 not too long ago, and anytime you get in an electric car, that's the comparison that you're compelled to make. And compared to a Tesla interior, this Porsche Taycan is no comparison whatsoever. I mean, this truly is a $200,000 plus interior. The quality, the fit and finish, it's absolutely fantastic. That's not a surprise though. That's what you expect out of a Porsche. When it comes to these interiors that Porsche makes, it's such high precision, such high quality that very few other car makers can compete at that level. It's not even just the quality of the interior and the fit and finish. What I love about what Porsche has done is the layout of the interior is very unique and interesting. It's got these three different screen layouts, one in front of the driver on the dash, one for the passenger, which I think is really cool, and then the one right above the center console. Not only does it give it a nice look, but I love the fact that as a passenger, I have my own screen to play with and keep myself busy. And you can do everything on this menu. You got your standard navigation, media, phone, devices, and also this interesting cockpit button. Click on cockpit and you got G-force and speed information. And if you happen to be on a track, which you very well might be, you have your sport chrono button and you can start recording lap times. Hey, if you trust the driver enough to go along with them on the track and measure all these stats, then more power to you. And if you want, you can fight over the driver on where you wanna go for lunch. Hit navigation, pick your restaurant, Food Fight Cafe. Then as the driver, if you don't want to go to Food Fight Cafe, you're in the driver's seat, so you get to decide. I'm not going to Food Fight, I want to go to Eddie V's. Much better. The driver's side display is really nice, and I love the clean, simple layout. I think Porsche has done a really good job with all the displays and how accessible everything is. There's also a fourth display below the center screen. On this display, you can pop open the front or the back trunks. And then a nice big display of how much charge you have left and how many miles you have to go, which is extremely important to know. And then you have all of your climate control operations. There are no buttons on the dash, so everything is through the screens. The haptic feedback on this screen is a little intense, almost a little too much. You can even hear it. As you push things on here, the entire thing vibrates. Definitely overdone. Normally with driver's cars like a Porsche, the passenger might as well not be here because all of the enjoyment happens for the driver. But because you have your screen and you can do things on it, it's not so bad being a passenger in the Taycan. The Taycan might not have the kind of technology that you have in a Tesla, like full self-driving or autopilot, but there are a couple interesting things worth pointing out. For example, with the driver's seat or passenger seat, you can decide how you want to shift the heated aspects of it. Do you want it more on the back part of the seat or the front part of the seat? And same thing with the ventilation. I think that's kind of cool that you can change all of that. Then with the drive modes, you have five different options, range, normal, sport, sport plus, and so on. Same thing with the chassis. And then with the chassis height, you can lift the car, lower it, however you like. All these different options to play with. And with the drive modes, you can also change it through the dial.
This is a Porsche after all, so you gotta have all of your sports settings. Here's what the car looks like in all different settings of ride height. This is what it looks like when the car's lifted up all the way. This is when it's fully lowered. Don't be fooled by these air conditioning vents. These are not movable. Instead, you control the airflow through the digital menu. To change the direction of the airflow, you can drag your finger across the screen and change it for all the vents. In the back, you just have two seats, not three seats, and it's pretty tight, not much leg room. What is nice though, is you have the panoramic roof that goes all the way back, so it gives you a nice sense of openness. By the way, a big shout out to my friends at Covert Buick GMC for allowing me to drive this Porsche Taycan. The horsepower wars have absolutely gone insane with this lineup of electric vehicles and battery packs. This Porsche is no different. So super fast, 670 horsepower. <laughs> wow, illegal speeds in no time at all. <laughs> Battery destroying power in this thing. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Exactly what you'd expect out of a 670 horsepower electric motor. The best part is it does feel and drive like a Porsche, which I'm really excited about. You do feel the weight of this car. It's a pretty heavy car. All of those batteries weigh it down, but still so much fun. Handling dynamics, all of that stuff is great on this thing. Porsche has this electric sound option on this car, which adds some futuristic spaceshipy noises to it when you're driving. Right now, the electric sound is turned off. So I'll do a quick comparison here between what it sounds like with the sound on versus off. When there is no sound, it's just a pretty quiet ride. Same as any other electric car that you've driven. It's now through the menu, I'll switch it on. When you're not on throttle, you don't hear a whole bunch. But once you mash the pedal, you hear some sounds. I'm going to punch it here in a second so you can hear what the electric sound sounds like. So I don't know how much of that sound came through. Some people might think it's gimmicky, but I don't mind it. The cars are so quiet anyway that some artificial noise at the very least, it makes it entertaining. The one thing you have to love about electric cars and the technology that's been brought to us is this instant torque. Gas engines clearly can't replicate it, but as car lovers, auto enthusiasts, this is something so exciting to experience every now and then. How can you not be impressed with this Porsche Taycan? It's fully electric, it drives like a Porsche, it's insanely fast, the interior is incredible. I don't know how Porsche managed to retain the Porsche driving dynamics in an all-electric version, but if they decided to completely stop making combustion engine ones and this is all we're left with, I'd be pretty happy with that.